Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Now, with his Pokedex <laughs> completed, our hero Cody sets off on his next journey, unaware of the challenges that lie ahead. Who said that? I'm the narrator. Fans don't know if I'm real or simply a figment of your imagination. <sighs> now I'm hearing voices. Uh, are you going to be here for long, or...? I'll be here at the start of every episode. Oh, great. As the journey continues... No, don't do that. Hey guys, Cody here, and welcome back to Every Pokemon Ever. As I was peacefully sleeping the night away, dreaming about all of the Pokemon that I caught to complete the Pokedex, it dawned on me that I forgot about one thing. What about all of the event Pokemon for Generation 1? That's right. Today, having event Pokemon is pretty cool. You can get them via online distribution or sometimes at an event, but back in the day, getting these Pokemon was much more difficult. Sometimes you even had to mail your cartridge into Nintendo for them to send it back to you with the event Pokemon on it. Crazy, right? But then you could walk around the playground with an elite status. There's one Pokemon that we're going to talk about today. You might have guessed it, it's Surfing Pikachu. Although I wouldn't necessarily classify this as an event Pokemon, it's definitely a hard one to get, and I'll explain why. For one, you need a copy of Pokemon Stadium for the N64. You also need a transfer pack, which connects your Game Boy game to the N64 controller. After acquiring all the gear, you then have to complete some in-game events in Pokemon Stadium so that you can teach your Pikachu from Pokemon Yellow version Surf. After doing so, you'll unlock some pretty cool options south of Fuchsia City. One of these is a Surfing Pikachu minigame. This was included with all purchases of Pokemon Yellow on the Virtual Console, but getting it on your actual Pokemon Yellow cartridge is something else. Let's run through my adventure to getting a legitimate Surfing Pikachu. Here we go. For starters, I flip open my Pokemon Stadium Player's Guide. It's not cheating, it's just using a little help. I read back there that in-game I have to defeat the Prime Cup Master Ball Division in order to teach my Pikachu Surf. That means I have to complete four rounds of eight trainers in order to get the trophies to even let Pikachu learn Surf. Anyway, I start to play Pokemon Stadium and I realize, you know what man? I really, really don't like this game. Matter, All right, for nostalgia's sake, yes, it's a great game. The mini games are amazing. Back in the day, I probably had a lot of fun with this, but doing this work now just to get this one Pokemon is very tedious. Pokemon Stadium includes three on three battles. If you pass a battle without one of your Pokemon feigning, you get to continue. If you don't, well, then it's a little more difficult. Anytime in a cup that you lose a match in the eight trainer run, you better hope you have continues, because if you don't, you have to start over from the very beginning. Not to mention the AI on this game is absolutely terrible. Even with the proper team of Pokemon for a situation, you can be ousted at any second by horrible decision making on the AI's part. You have to go through four divisions, Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Ball, and Master Ball. As I'm starting to play the game, I reread the back of the player's guide and I realize something. This says Round 2 Prime Cup is necessary to get Pikachu to learn Surf. Then I discovered that not only do I have to get all of the trophies and all of the cups to proceed to round two, I also have to battle the gym leader Tower and Mewtwo. This is becoming one heap of a task. I start to feel like all hope is lost, and then I had an epiphany. This actually isn't my original copy of Pokemon Stadium. So when I was really young, I had a friend named Bryson, and I remember letting him borrow my copy of Pokemon Stadium. I remember getting to round two on this cartridge of the game. So just out of the blue, I hit up Bryson just on happenstance that he happened to still have it, and lo and behold, he sent a picture back with my cartridge. That's my name right there, that's me! Anyway, Bryson, man, you are super awesome. He sent me the game free of charge and said good luck on your Pokemon journey. Dude, thanks a lot, man. But this copy of the game, I actually made it through round one. I didn't do anything in round two, so I did still have some work to do, but at least we're this far, right? The next caveat of the whole thing is I have to replay yellow version. I started out with red version on this quest, and I needed to play yellow version to get my Pikachu to Fuchsia City. Hi. You can also play these Game Boy games in Pokemon Stadium so that they appear on your TV. It's a pretty cool feature. If you complete certain in-game events, you can also unlock something called a Doduo Game Boy, which allows you to play at double speed, and then a Dodrio Game Boy, which allows you to play at triple speed. Now we're talking. This, right now, is real time. So 
once I plug in yellow version, I'm allowed to just blast through this whole thing. Of course, I'm gonna do the level 100 glitch, which I talked about in an earlier video. In Pokemon Yellow, though, it's a little different, and I'll explain why. After doing the story stuff, once you get to Viridian Forest, there's actually an extra trainer here that you don't want to battle. It's this guy right here. We're gonna go around him and battle the last trainer that I didn't battle in red and blue. Then once I'm in Peter City, you can buy an escape rope from the Mart, and then I'm gonna start the glitch. I head back down to that trainer I skipped just a moment ago, and I'm gonna step in front of him and press start at the same time. If I time it correctly, I'm able to open my start menu as he spots me. I can then use my escape rope to travel back to Pewter City. A speech bubble will pop up once again just like before, and now the glitch has begun. You'll notice your start menu doesn't work. We're also going to want to head over to the right side of town and step in front of this guy. Don't step in the space directly below him, make sure you leave a gap. Once I step over there, he'll show me the way to Brock's gym. I mean, thanks, there's like four buildings in town, but thanks. You'll notice your start menu still doesn't work and you can't visit the Pokemon Center, but that's okay. We're going to head down onto Route 2, and now we're going to run into a wild Pokemon. Just like before, the special stat of this Pokemon that you battle will match up to a glitch Pokemon. You can look up the list and try to figure out what's going on, but basically you want to run into a wild Pokemon, use Growl six times, because once again, glitch Pokemon come in at level seven. By changing the status of this Pokemon six times, you lower that level ID by one level every time, and we want the glitch Pokemon to be level one. Same stuff as before. Anyway, I growl six times and then I end the battle. Now when I go down and re-enter Viridian Forest, I find out that the glitch Pokemon I hunted this time was Nidoking. Not bad. Now I have a level one Nidoking. Just like before, I want to switch him to the front of my party, battle a wild Pokemon, and then switch out to Pikachu. Once Pikachu defeats that Pokemon, Nidoking will get just a little bit of experience points, and boom, he'll be level 100 automatically. Now we can just sail through the game. I'm going to turn on my Dodrio Hyperspeed and set off on this adventure as fast as I can. However, I did run into a little hiccup when it came to the Missing No glitch. <laughs> type. So about halfway through your adventure, when you're normally able to get to Missing No, in Pokemon Yellow version, you're not able to just talk to that old drunk guy and then sail off to Cinnabar Island and find him. We're gonna have to get a little more creative here. So we do have to get to Cinnabar Island once again, but we're also gonna be using that trainer who's located in the tall grass above Nugget Bridge, as well as find a Ditto, which in Yellow version can only be found in the Pokemon Mansion, because they're failed clones of Mew. I'll also be taking this time to use the Missing No glitch to multiply my rare candies, because I need my Pikachu to be level 100 for the multiple Pokemon Stadium rounds I have to do. Yay! Anyway, further preparations include a Pokemon that knows Fly, an Escape Rope, and then a Pokemon with a special stat ID that translates over to Missing No. Once again, you'll find a full list of special stats and what Pokemon you can get from them in the description below. If you recall finding Missing No in red and blue version, it's a little more clear cut there. You find Missy No in random forums based on your name, of all things. In Yellow version, we're effectively using the Any Pokemon glitch to put Missy No in as a placeholder for a Pokemon that doesn't exist. If you scan through the list, you can also find some other cool things like this creepy fossil thingy. Ugh. So anyway, to get things started, you want to head to this spot north of Nugget Bridge. Make sure you save your game before you go any further. Next, we're going to press down and start at the same time. Our goal is to get our start menu to open up without initiating a trainer battle. If you accidentally start a battle, just reset your game and try again. Now with your start menu open, let's find that Pokemon that knows fly and spread our wings towards Cinnabar Island. You also see that exclamation mark pop up? That's a good thing, that means the glitch has worked. Now we're going to head into Cinnabar Mansion. We have two goals here. One is to get our start menu to work again, and two is to find a wild ditto on the bottom floor. And I really hope you brought that escape rope. As for getting the start menu to open again, that's fairly simple. All you have to do is battle a trainer. If this is the first time you've stepped into the Pokemon Mansion, you're in luck. There are several trainers lying around for you to take care of. Be sure, once again, to approach them from a distance. If you step directly in front of them, you'll freeze your game. After defeating a trainer, you'll notice your start menu works once again. Now our goal is to get to the basement. You should remember this from before when I covered it, but step up a staircase, around the corner, press a statue switch, jump off a balcony, and then you're well on your way to the basement, where discredited ex-scientists performed illegal laboratory experiments! <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, I just like to cackle every once in a while. Anyway, go ahead and find a ditto and make sure that he transforms into the Pokémon with the special stat that translates over to the Pokémon that you want to glitch into the game. After he transforms, end the battle and then use your escape rope to get the heck out of here. Then we're going to fly off to Cerulean City and prepare for battle. If you step north on the Nugget Bridge, your pause menu will open automatically. If you close it, the glitch battle will begin. As long as you performed all of these steps, Missing No will appear. Once again, you can use this to get any Pokemon that your heart desires, or Missing No, or even my creepy little fossil buddy over here. It all depends on the special stat of the Pokemon that Ditto transformed into. So it's time for a heads up, guys. In yellow version, Missing No is pretty glitchy compared to red and blue version. 
I've only had about a 20% success rate of getting the battle to start, let alone finish it. Something about him here just makes the game go completely bonkers. Sometimes the music just slows down to a singular beep that sounds like a hospital patient on their deathbed. Or, you know, sometimes the game just turns all black and weird and glitchy and I don't know what's going on. I don't think anything is game altering, but it's definitely a harder test than it ever was before. You'll see here I enter a battle with Missino, and all of a sudden my menu is super glitchy. I can kind of get the feel of where the menus are, so I press down and right and run away from the battle. I don't want to deal with this. So once we're out of here, what the heck? Why are there clones of me? What's going on? Anyway, I finally get my menu open and I try to toggle through the glitchiness to get to where I think the Pokemon section is. I'm finally able to use Fly and as we take off, it looks like Pidgey's become a clone as well. So after that whole glitchy glitchy fiasco, we finally make it back to Viridian City. My game looks just fine now, there's no more glitches, no more clones, there's only one of me. I think this is good. Then it's time to open up my start menu and check out my rare candies. I find out that they multiplied the way they were supposed to. Yes! I'm gonna go ahead and use my rare candies to boost Pikachu to level 100. Now we're gonna switch over to the Pokemon Stadium gameplay. You have to beat the Master Ball round 2 while using Pikachu every round. Several days later. At this point, we finally, finally unlock the option to teach our Pikachu Surf. I am so beyond excited for this. It's beautiful. Yeah, cool. Now we can surf. See, look. There I am surfing in the water, south of Fuchsia City. I don't know where I am. Am I inside of the Pikachu? And now, for the coolest part of this entire journey, we can finally play the minigame Pikachu's Beach. I have been waiting since my childhood to play this once again. Yeah, I used to have a surfing Pikachu on my Yola version, as well as a Mew, until Brandon decided to start a new game and delete my save file. Oh my gosh, I was so pissed. He really is the worst rival. Nah, just kidding. He's alright. Anyway, even though this is going to be absolutely horrible, I'm going to show you a playthrough of Pikachu's Beach. Basically, if you flip one way or another or multiple times, you get more points versus other ways. I don't really know. But I'm falling off this board left and right, but I'm still going to show it to you guys. Here we go. After all is said and done, there's only one thing left to do, explore the Game Boy printer options. I go ahead and mess around with this, I have a link cable, and I have a special Pikachu edition Game Boy printer from back in the day. I go ahead and hook it up, and I can print out a special certificate saying thank you for playing the game.
can also print out my Hall of Fame diploma, as well as a slew of other Game Boy related pictures. So after wasting a huge chunk of my life getting this worthless Pokemon that I can't even trade to a newer game, I feel like a true Pokemon master. There is nothing else I can possibly do in Generation 1, so this is where my journey ends. Thanks for joining me guys, I'll see you later. Oh, wait a minute. Weren't there a bunch of event Pokemon for Generation 1? Like a bunch of Mews or something? Oh my god. Oh, jeez. Alright, guys. Looks like we're making another video. Oh, man. Pokemon Ever is 100% non-profit, by the fans, for the fans, but there is a way that you can help out. We're supporting St. Jude Children's Hospital. Donate today and help end childhood cancer.